One thing that you may not know about me is that I am the world's biggest fan of having a bath. Or, as the Americans would say, taking a bath. Hello, this video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words. And specifically, word differences. Those of you that have followed me since the beginning of time will know that Britain and America are truly two nations divided by a common language. But of course, as we've seen so far in this illustrious series, there are occasions when both countries have different meanings for the same word. In fact, it should ignite in you, as it has done in me, just how common this is by the fact that this is part nine in the series. In the past, we've looked at both countries' treatment of the word randy, and how not only is the word derby slash Derby pronounced differently between the two countries, but doesn't always mean the same thing. And so, without further ado, here are five words that Britain and America use very differently. Part 9. That's it, we're starting today's list with the word slate, and I know what people in both countries are now thinking. What? The other country doesn't use that type of grey rock to tile their roofs? Well, as I've shown you before, there are of course many differences when it comes to British versus American houses. But that is not one of them. No, the difference comes in how British and American people use the word slate as a verb. In the United Kingdom, to slate somebody means to disparage them. So in the early days of my YouTube channel, my British viewers absolutely slated me for making bad beans on toast. Whereas in the United States, to slate something is to schedule. As in, you know, after Lawrence failed to sufficiently butter his toast, the apology tour was slated for the next day. Meanwhile, entry number two is slated for right now. Pop, as in pop goes the weasel, which when you think about it is a terrifying image. And of course, in parts of the United States, the word pop is used to mean fizzy drink. And you're probably thinking, that's the difference, but it isn't. And that's because, and I don't know if this is a regional thing, and that's why I never picked it up, the word pop is occasionally used in this sense in Britain. But in Britain, the word pop is also used as a verb in a manner that it isn't in the United States. Sure, both countries might pop a balloon. But in Britain, a person might pop their clogs. And what does that mean? It's not funny. It means to die. But we also use the word pop to mean put, as in, ooh, look at Lawrence. He unevenly popped a map on the wall. Isn't he a prat? And if you think at this point that Britain has exhausted all of the ways that it can use pop as a verb, where well, you can just pop along now, which means go. Whereas in the United States, you're all about your pop nouns. Sure, both countries have pop music. And who's the father of pop music? I've no idea, but it was a good segue into the fact that in parts of America, pop means father. Now, if things get really bad, you might well tell somebody to pop along in the British sense while giving them this. Of course, we all know that in Britain, a car has a boot and in America, it has a trunk. And so that begs the question, what use of boot do Americans use that the British don't? Well, the answer is quite nuanced in the United States to eject a person from a group setting. For instance, this week I had to boot out my social media manager because he didn't know how TikTok worked. I'm the, I mean, I'm the social media manager. It's, I fired myself. But in any event, you might be thinking, well, what do Brits use for this then? And just like in America, there are various terms for kicking someone out. But the one most closely aligned to this is to give someone the boot, preferably a stinky one that they have to take home with them. For example, I am going to give my finance strategist the boot because between you and me, she's crap at maths. All right, I admit, I, that I am the finance strategist and I go by Sharon on the weekends. Anyway, while we're on the subject of pushing things out, that brings us on to this. Catapult to medieval Britain and American reenactments of medieval Britain. A catapult was slash is a large contraption that, for want of a better phrase, catapulted Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman over a castle. That was a reference to Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. They're absolutely amazing and I highly recommend them to anyone like me that lives on a third floor apartment. But in Britain, a catapult can also be a Y-shaped handheld projectile weapon that sadly I've not had in my possession since the age of nine due to the infamous greenhouse incident of 1990. But perhaps now that I live in the United States, I can circumvent the rules on a linguistic technicality. And that's because here, this kind of catapult is known as a slingshot. Sorry, this invisible. 
Meanwhile, in the United States, the word is often used to mean rise quickly. And this isn't in the context of getting out of bed with haste, because if it was, I wouldn't be able to relate to it so greatly. No, it means rise quickly to a place of prominence. In other words, one day Lawrence was making inaccurate videos about English cuisine, and the next he catapulted his way into YouTube superstardom. And those aren't my words. They are my words. In all seriousness though, the last year on this channel has been amazing. You might almost say that I hit the American version of this. If you've been watching this particular series on words as religiously as I have, then you'll know that we can barely get through a single video without referencing baseball. As we've seen before, both countries have different meanings for the word pitcher and strike. And so it is true of the phrase home run. Famously, this is the most exciting part, some would say only exciting part, in a baseball game. When a player hits a ball so far, it allows them to run to all four bases, is that correct? I am told that the United States has another meaning for home run, but my mum's watching and I don't want to be demonetised. In Britain, the term home run is often used to describe the final part of a distance. So if you're going on a road trip and your child asks, are we nearly there yet? You can just tell them, we're on the home run. And Americans might recognise this because it sounds like, and is used in a similar way, to home stretch. Which, as it happens, we are approaching in this video. Let's count down the top three. Yet, appropriately, the third from last entry has three letters, NHS. In past surveys, the NHS ranked high among the things that British people miss most when they moved to America. And it's of scant consolation that the United States has its own entity bearing these three letters. In Britain, the NHS stands for the National Health Service, a government-run healthcare plan funded by the British taxpayer that was founded shortly after World War II. Strikingly though, the American use of NHS is slightly older. Standing for National Honor Society, this is a scholastic organization that's open to high schoolers who excel in things like leadership skills, academics, and good citizenship. All qualities that in a perfect world would be associated with the following city, but aren't always. Yep, yeah, you see what I'm doing here? The second to last entry has two letters. I'm so clever. And it doesn't take a detective to work out what the American use of DC means. But it might take one to ascertain the UK definition. In fact, it might take a detective constable, that's often abbreviated to DC. As in, hi, can you put me through to DC Johnson, please? No, sorry, can't. DC Johnson is tied up with PC Woods. PC is police constable. And personal computer. And political correctness and Phil Collins. Of course, in the United States, DC is the shorthand way of referring to the capital city, Washington DC. This shorthand use is far less common among Brits who are more likely to refer to it confusingly as Washington. Of course, the United States has seen many capital cities during its relatively short history. And with a changing nation comes a changing language. Have you ever wondered how English took on a life of its own in the United States? Well, thanks to the great courses plus, wonder no more. I am thrilled to recommend Professor Natalie Schilling's English in America, a linguistic history. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand video learning service with brilliant lectures and courses from Ivy League professors and experts from places like National Geographic and the Smithsonian. Through your subscription, you'll get access to over 11,000 lectures covering subjects that interest you. Visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash lost in the pond right now to begin your free trial. The link is in my description below. In the meantime, go and run yourself a nice hot bath in time for the final entry, unless you're American. One thing that you may not know about me is that I am the world's biggest fan of having a bath, or as the Americans would say, taking a bath. And for the first 26 years of my life before I even entertained the idea of moving to America, a bathroom by its very definition contained a bath. That's why it's called a bathroom. Additionally, a British bathroom will also contain a sink and sometimes, but not always, a toilet. In America, the script is flipped. If an American asks you, where's the bathroom in this place? They're really telling you, I need to pop to the loo, except they wouldn't use the word loo or, as we've established, pop. So to recap, a US bathroom will have a toilet, a sink, and usually a bathtub or a shower, but it's not required. 
That's it for this episode. I'm Lawrence Brown. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US and be sure to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A medieval catapult size shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.